Hello and welcome, my name is Kai from KaiserArt.co.uk and today we're going to be working on a 16 by 12 canvas. Yes, and we're going to be producing a little winter scene like that. This is winter birch trees, yes, to go with the, the autumn birch trees I did a couple of months ago. So if that's something you're interested in, please stay with me. After a short introduction, you can come and join me in the studio and we'll paint along together. Nice. Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. Hello and welcome into the studio. Yes, so thank you for joining me here today. Now, um, if you've never ever painted before, if you've never picked up a paintbrush, you can try this. Trust me. Is it something you've been thinking of doing as a as an interest or therapy and you wanted to do some painting, then please try this. I'm going to make it as easy as I possibly can just for you. Yes. So without further ado, let's have a look at some of the colours that we're going to be using today. Now, as you can see, in a normal way, the colours are running up the right hand side of the screen and um, it's very limited palette. Yes, we've got some titanium white. We've got some Mars black. Any black will do for this painting, doesn't matter, just black. We've got some cadmium red or red, any red, any, any value red, it doesn't really matter for this. And um, we've got some mid-range yellow, so you're looking for a, a medium yellow. In other words, it's not too bright and it's not too dull. So you're looking for something quite in, in, in the middle and um, some Ceylon blue. Now that's a very light blue. It's got a bit of a green um, undertone to it, but don't worry too much about that. We're not going to discuss that. So basically you're looking for a light blue and, um, and that's all we really need. And if you've painted with me before, um, you know that I use a, a medium mix flow improver. If you haven't uh, painted with me before, um, all this is, it's an acrylic base and um, I put a little it's a basically a acrylic fluid it is so i put that in there and um if you want to have a look at the icads that will explain things in a little bit more detail for you because i'm not going down that road today i don't want to make this complicated this is quite easy quite nice and quite relaxed i'm mixing a little bit of water with that and then that, that, that's the palette don't worry about the brushes i've always got the same brushes in my little box and i tend to use the same brushes during the lessons yes now brushes don't worry again about that um, if you've never painted before, um, I'll make a little, I, I am, I will actually put the list of some of the brushes I'm going to be putting into the painting today, or I'm going to be using in the painting, not putting them in the painting, <laughs> I haven't got any glue. Um, but what I'll do is, um, I just I just pick up a, a, a variety of brushes and I, and I explain that as I paint. Now, we are looking at a canvas and this canvas today is, well it's 16 inches by 12 inches. Now, I'm an old school. I work in inches, but there's a lot of people out there that work in centimetres. There is. Now, I've been told, what is this in centimetres? What is that in centimetres? What is that in millimetres? Etc. Etc. And I actually didn't realise, but you could see, I don't know if you can actually see that, I've actually got a conversion table on the back of my rule. So, um, what I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to work out some conversions for you and I'm going to put them in the little show more button below. So, 16 inches long is roughly about 40 centimeters and um and you've got you've got 12 inches which is oh, about 30 30 about just over 30 centimeters but don't worry about that and um the, okay, whoops <laughs> i got a big magnet on the side of my bench where i stick my rule to because it's a metal one yes um don't worry about the conversions they're all underneath make it easy for you okay so stop waffling live let's get on the painting Okay, so I just I had to look for a pencil. Yes, I'm gonna take my hat off because it's warm in here today. It's actually it's not raining for once. <laughs> Makes a change, especially in Wales. Okay, so let's have a look. What the first thing we want to do? Um, what I've done is I've just put um, a little bit of gesso onto the canvas with a little tiny little bit of Ceylon blue in it, just to give it a hint of blue. Now, if you don't know how to do that, please press the I cards by there, and that's gonna take you into um, a video to show you how to paint the ground because I didn't want to confuse the issue with everything today if you're just using a plain canvas just use a plain white canvas it makes no difference really um, I just covered up an old drawing actually that's why I did it so I'm taking my my rule and I'm going roughly four and a half inches there and roughly four and a half inches there and I'm just going to make a, a very very light pencil line across there you go very very lightly hardly touching the canvas a very very light 
touch that's a little bit winky wonky I'm sitting on an angle so I tend to do things a bit weird sometimes well, I'll do. it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be accurate don't worry about it the thing is we don't stress in the studio no we don't okay so that's our horizon lines in other words that's where the sky is going to meet the ground and um, I always got some kitchen roll in the studio and um, the first thing we want to do is get yourself um, a nice I got one here I was using it earlier there we are get yourself a nice one and a half inch short flat or anything roughly that size will do it doesn't have to be exactly that size but this just happens to be a one and a half inch you want something around about that size anyway and um, you just get a little bit of moisture and let's just put a little bit of moisture over there let me just wash my brush out properly so I just get a little bit of moisture and put that there like that now what we're going to need to do is put some sort of a sky in there now we've got we've got the lightest part already done but um, I'm just going to get a little bit of white titanium white just by there I'm going to thin that down with a little bit of moisture because there is resin in there um, it's not going to break the bonds it's not going to underbind the paint if you want to know what underbinding is there's a video coming up shortly explaining all that but in this particular case don't worry about that it's not important at the moment if you just want to put some paint on a canvas and get some get some painting done and that's all we're looking to do today and we're not worried about stress and anxiety and all the other things that come with um, learning to paint because it does happen it does yes and um, right okay so let's just put a very very light now I, I, I'm, I'm not putting a lot of paint on this canvas I'm just slowly slowly just caressing that canvas now what I have got here um, but it is it there it is it's a nice fine mist bottle this is an atomizer bottle and I'm just misting down the canvas there you go and that just keeps that way paint wet you don't want to put a lot of a lot of moisture on there and I'm going to pick up a little bit of cellulon blue again a little bit of titanium white get it a very light color there we go and then I'm going to work from the bottom up this time because I want it slightly darker there now normally you work from the top down and the normally the top part of the sky is a lot darker than the base of the sky but the reason I've done this today is because I want the top of the sky to show like as if it's full of clou uh, clouds and snow and you know you've got that you've got that wintry wintry feel don't actually put any detail in there as such and just spread in a little bit more spread in a little bit more white like that get a little bit of that blue now and just pick a spot and put a little bit of blue just here and there like as if there's a little bit of a break in the cloud and that's all you need to do really with that you can increase I'm still using the same brush just picking up some titanium white now not thinning it down so much and you can just rub in your brush if you rub in your brush like I go in little circles like this you just make it look as if there's a little bit of texture in the sky a little bit of fluffiness there you go and I'm using an old canvas today because um, it's, a, it's a canvas I actually drew on um, for another lesson but I never never actually got around to doing the lesson so I just use these canvases and I try and you reuse what I can but you use whatever whatever you got to hand and that's a good thing don't spend too much it's not in, it's, you shouldn't spend too much money to enjoy art there you go and then just getting a little bit more white and then just in that blue area there just put a couple of little lines in like that nice and easy nice and easy and before you know it you've developed a wonderful looking sky yes how easy is that and um, if you want to practice practice 
practice on some um, old cardboard, practice on some old canvases, or just keep using the same ca canvas over and over and keep practicing these techniques. And before you know it, you'll get there. Yes, I got great confidence in you. I certainly have. <laughs> okay, now what we need to do now is we want to put something down here, and I'm still using the same brush. Yes, so. What what shall we do? So let's, let's get a little bit of yellow, a little tiny bit of yellow like that, and a very, very small amount, a very, very small amount. Try not to overdo it. Can you see Can you see that? Have a look. Let the camera focus. There we go. See how, how, how much black paint I've actually got on that brush? Only a small touch. And I'm just going to touch that into that yellow. Look how strong that tiny little bit of black paint was there let's mix a bit of a bit more yellow to it and just a little bit more just a little touch more let's just darken that up because this black will make a lovely green so you've got the chance to buy some Mars black buy some Mars black because there's a lot of blue in Mars black okay so what I want to do now is a little bit of touch and touch a tiny small again a little bit of touch of blue just to green that off a little bit more there we go and I'm just gonna small small touch of red because I just want to dull that color off I don't want it so bright but red and green are compliments we'll be discussing um, color wheels and things like that but if you want to know more about colour mixing, have a look in the iCards there and I'll take you through into the colour theory se section. Now I've made this into a, a quite a thin, you know, you can see there's not much paint on, on there, not much paint on my brush, but that's the effect I want. Because so all I'm going to do now, all you need to do now, is, is just tap, just tap. Just tap. Don't worry about down there, that's not important. Just tap. Just use the very edge of that brush. Just keep tapping, tap, 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 like that. Tap, 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 tap. So all you've got to do is tap. Just using the very edge of that brush there, just the very edge. Put it on there. You can put it down a little bit like that. There's not much paint on this brush. Don't overload your brush. Not much paint on that brush whatsoever. Just tap, 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 tap. Don't worry about this, that's not important. You can just clean your brush off like that if you wanted to. There you go. And tap, 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 tap. I know I keep going over and over and over the same type of thing, but it's important that you you understand that painting is, 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 is an easy process if you just follow a, a few simple rules. It's all we need to do, follow a few simple rules. There you go. Now what we're going to do now is get a bit more yellow and a bit more black. And I'm going to darken that. Get a lot more paint this time. A lot more paint this time. A bit more black. test it. Oh, it's not dark enough yet. So let's just wipe our brush. Let's get a bit more black, a bit more blue. Mix up a nice green. We want a nice dark looking green. So just mix the blue and yellow mix green. Black can darken it. Red is what they call a desaturation. It means it takes our brightness away. It just makes our, our green look dull instead of bright. And let's try again. And we got some, we're using the brush this way now. Down, up a bit, down, 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 down. Flick up a bit. There you go. Brush that in and that. There you go. Let's darken that even more. And 
just on the side of the brush I'm just using that edge that edge of the brush there all I'm doing is, is tapping the canvas like that just tapping the canvas but I'm not killing everything that I've done with there I'm leaving a couple of those show through and as I come down these are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and I can turn my brush around don't worry about what you're doing here concentrate on the top edge what you can actually see the top edge how <laughs> the top edge is the actual tops of the trees themselves see it's not down here you can get your brush if you want if it makes it easier for you to just pull that across like that that's not going to hurt anything there you go So you wanna if you pull this if you pull this the paint down like that to make a little rise you can see you can got a, you can get a bit of a land how the how the land can actually flow and what we're doing is we're playing with with colors and direction of paint and this is all designed to help you learn if you've never painted before you can do this you can practice this and you you've got all the time in the world all the time in the world Again, using the very edge of the brush. Let's get a little bit of shape in there. A bit more black. Let's just darken that up a touch. Make a line. And then flick up. Your brush off like that. Now, what I suggest you do is wash your brush into some water and either get a hairdryer, which is what I'm going to do, or you just let that dry naturally, or you can put it on top of a radiator or next to a radiator or something like that if you haven't got a hairdryer. But um, I think most people got hairdryers in the house. Um, so let's just dry that off quickly. Okay, now we've done that what we want to do is um, using the same brush make sure it's, it's, um, it's clean and just get a bit more of that mix into the white it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of touch of blue to it at all it doesn't matter and then just very lightly with a bit of that white Just go over those trees like that. And that'll just give them a little bit of a. You don't want a lot of paint. This is this is more this is more um, fluid or water. In, uh, and we'll be talking about waters and acrylic paints again. But for this instance, as I said, if you've never painted before, this is a good way. There you go. So just all we've done is put a little bit of very 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 thin paint over there, and I'm going to dry that once more. Now I'm picking up um, a, a smaller uh, f flat. Now actually, this is a little filbert, but you can use a, a little short flat. It doesn't really matter, filbert or short flat, it doesn't matter. And I'm picking up some yellow. I'm going to mix a bit more black to that in exactly the same way as we mixed that one, but I want this a little bit thicker and a little bit darker. Bring a bit of blue to it. Just want a dark green. Now I'm going to go around about by there and I'm going to put some easy little tiny looking trees in and I'm just using the brush like this. It doesn't matter, this is all you're looking for here is shapes. There's not a lot of detail, you just want shapes.
it just gives that little bit more of a of a depth um, to the painting and this is all you're trying to do you're trying to you're trying to make depth by adding different tones of color and as I said it, it doesn't have to be anything special you don't have to be you don't have to make Pacific trees or anything like that just what you, all you want to do is find some shapes that's all it is just finding some shapes because the detail is going to be in the foreground now going back to your one and a half inch flat get a bit of titanium white back up there a little bit of blue pull a little bit of that blue into it you don't want a, a bright white you want a little bit of blue now just get your brush and just on the side very very loosely just pull through like this scagging that paint onto the canvas like that don't forget we've got a bit of a rise of land here so we need to bring that up like that very very lightly let's get some more paint on the canvas not a lot of paint if you, if you want to put a little bit of blue to it you can I just don't I don't want it I don't want it bright white I don't mind if there's a bit of blue to it and that's the key snow is not always pure white and very very lightly and I'm still very very lightly dragging this across just getting some of that green that we've already put in place to show through as well You'll hear people say um, that paintings go through ugly stages and, and if you're a beginner you, you don't know what that means and what I'm trying to say is that a lot of people um, can actually get very upset and despondent that the painting is not looking the way they expect it to look and even um, experienced artists know that a painting comes along in stages and the difficult thing as a beginner is understanding that um, your painting can look very ugly <laughs> it can it can look very ugly and you get a little bit again as I said despondent and upset that you know it's not looking like anything in particular and this doesn't look like anything in particular at the moment but it's it's about layering it's, a, it's about building up layers upon layers upon layers of, of, of paint and detail and and that's what it's all about so all you do is just spread a little bit of white paint across don't put it on too thick and um, this is what we're trying to, to find and then we can bring a little bit of blue a bit more blue into that white paint now just bring a bit more blue into that white paint and just put a little bit of blue just at the back there like that just to cool our area down a bit there we, there we go I'm just, just going to bring a little bit of blue here and there like that just, just for the, so I can see where I'm going ok now with the fun part we'll get another short flat this is a half inch and um, what I'm going to do is mix a little bit of blue but there I'm going to mix a bit of yellow a bit of red a bit more yellow a bit of nice dark colour and we're just using the colours that I got on the palette and not worrying too much about it there we go just get a little bit of moisture into there and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tree we've got to make a decision very very thinly there like that I 
that's the first one that's the first line the second line is going to come there like that a little bit little bit thicker this one and don't worry about where he's going to go and sit at the moment we can work that out in the second I'm going to put another one now a bit thicker another line just draw a line like that and again don't worry about the bottoms we can work the bottoms out when we decide what tree is going where okay this one not all not all trees actually grow straight so let's put another one by here and let's just bring a little bit of a a twist on this one so that is now in front of that but he still exists so let's just bring this one a bit lower like that oh it looks uh, looks certainly different let's add a little bit more black to that color a bit more blue a bit more yellow let's get a bit of red in there a bit more black yeah just doesn't matter what color it doesn't matter just make a color up it doesn't matter you just want a dark color for this now this side time will come there it's a little bit darker but that's okay this time will come there we'll just draw a line try and be loose with this That looks good so i mean we got one two three four five so that's an odd number which is pretty good an odd number is better than an even number and that's a fact okay so while we let in that dry let's get a smaller brush and for this i'm going to use well we're going to need a we're going to need a script liner brush anyway a script liner brush is a very long pointy brush like that and um, they're pretty good for all different things now this time i'm just going to get a little detail brush and i will put a list i will put right down what brushes i'm using i'll put that in the description for you to make it easy so i've added a bit of moisture and twisted my brush like that to get that to a nice sharp point i'm going to use my hand to rest upon like that and now i'm just going to put a line there like that I'm gonna put another line there like that and I'm gonna put another little line like that and I'm gonna use the top of my brush just gonna top of my brush just rest in my hand on the canvas and I'm just gonna just tap in as if it's a bit of a fir tree and while I'm tapping you can use different brushes for this um, you can use um, fan brushes and stuff but I just wanted to show you that you can just get a similar type of, of effect but just to tap in this brush like that And again to get a bit more paint and you can start tap in tap in tap in and again as I said this this painting is uh, has been thought of for you as a beginner I've, I've I thought myself yeah I can I can develop a painting that way for you so I just thought put a couple of more leaves if you've never painted before you can try this i know you can paint this i know you can paint this so we just leave them as they are for the moment so you make that one trunk a little bit longer than that one because it looks as if it's in front of that one that's what they call perspective and then I mean, you can make this one a bit shorter than that one so it looks as if they're just disappearing and they're not really are they they're on the same surface but 
it's because you can make that one longer than that one it makes it look as if it's it's going back so there's something there for the little birds to sit in and, and sing along we can bring a little bit of dark into the sides of these just to balance them off a bit just pushing your brush in like that just put a little bit of that dark color in just to give it a little bit of a, a shadow on the one side look okay a little bit of shadowing there like that there you go easy as that easy as that that's all i wanted to show you <laughs> okay now let's get some titanium white mix that a little bit of white there into that color we mixed to put the tree on there you go and now paint that on like that and you can do one tree at a time bring his foot out a little bit like that Get some titanium white I'm going to use because I'm sitting on a, on a strange angle at the moment so I'm using what they call a mark stick and it's basically just a piece of stick or a bamboo cane or something like that or a bit of doubling rod uh, with a cork on the end it's quite a cork stick so I'm just resting my hand on that because it's the angle and I don't want to get my head in shot see look I can get my head in shot if I'm not careful <laughs> So what I'm going to do now is going to bring some titanium white straight in, pure titanium white. There's quite a little bit of paint on my brush and I want a little bit of texture. So I'm bringing in a bit of that titanium white. And all you're doing is just painting that line again with that. Being nice and slow and gentle, taking your time. go and then bring that down like that a bit more white make parts of this tree brighter than others there you go and you can always add a little bit more white if you're not too satisfied with the way it looks later there you go bit of black or I'll use that dark color add a bit of black to it so using all the same type of colors and then just get your brush and then just pull pull through get a picture of some um, birch trees if you want if it makes it if it makes it a bit easier for you and just pull a couple of these little lines like that across Carry on doing that all the way down tree like this. Just put those little lines in. Make it look as realistic as you can. There you go. Maybe a bit darker down here. Mix mixing all those colours together. What I wanted to do now is do that to every single one of those those trees. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do that, and um, just to save video time, but it, these will be done in exactly the same way, and then we'll have a look at doing some branches. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I just wanted to speed up the filming a little bit. I didn't want to run it up fast or anything, so I just thought I'd just cut the camera and do those. So I've done those uh, the, those trunks in exactly the same way as we did the first one. Is no different and what we're going to be doing now 
is putting some highlights and things on those at a later stage. But I thought, let's get some snow in. So pure titanium white onto my little filbert brush. This is a brush we've used earlier. And I'm just going to bring in some snow like this. Just lay it on, lay it on like that. Don't worry about going over those trunks. We can, we can re-establish those in a second. Just concentrate on this area here first. Just laying on that snow. Don't worry about it being all thick and, and heavy. Just a, just a little bit of blue now on the brush. Just a little bit of blue on the brush. There we are, a little bit of blue on the brush. I just, I just want to cool that down, that snow down. Just mix it in, mix it in like that. Just cooling that down, that snow. Don't put a lot of blue on your brush. Just mix that in there like that. We can sort the, the chunks of those trees out in a second. Just, just wanted to cool that snow down. And get in between these trees. Don't worry about it being exactly brilliant white, it doesn't matter. You want, you want a little bit of that underlining colour to actually show through these, these trees because the, the snow is going to be building up on these shortly. It certainly is. And then just bring in a bit of... Just working around the base of these trees just for the moment. There we are. We can alter that in one second. So just basically put a coat of paint on but try not to destroy everything you put on underneath. That's, that's the key with snow, is to, to get it look uh, as realistic as you possibly can, is, is to, to leave some underlining colour there. And um, I just want to take away the base of those trunks a minute. There we are, we can sort that out in a second. As this is coming down, if we get a, if we get a, a line coming in like this, if we just do that, establish that line, because we know this is going to be flowing that way. There you are. I don't want to complicate things if I can help it. Now, I haven't put any more paint on my brush. All I'm going to do is just take off what paint is on them. I want to make that brush as dry as I can. Because all I'm going to do now is just lightly, 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 just scrub in over those trees. It looks as if there's a little bit of snow gathering them. This is a dry brushing technique so that's all you need to do. Here and there, here and there. We can add a little bit more onto those in a minute. I just want to make them look, there you go, that's just dry brushing. That's, that's all that is, you've taken them all the as most as the paint off our brushes you can there's very very little on there it's just it's just the color really that's left on the brush and just very very lightly very very lightly just rub over what you've already painted and that color is going to come off your brush and go onto that and it's going to bring the texture of that canvas through as well but it's going to look as if it's very misty it's going to look as if there's a little bit of snow over there oops it's going to look as if there's a little bit of snow over there. Try not to go onto the, the paint that you've already painted like I did then because it's going to pick up onto your brush and go onto your trees. That's not what you want. So you're knocking those back already. We're worrying about these at a later stage. Now, we need to put some trunks in. Uh, um, some branches in trunks. <laughs> we need to put some branches in these trees. So let's go. If you haven't got, a, if you haven't got one of those, that's, that's what I call a script liner. If you haven't got a script liner brush, then you can get away with just using a detail brush. I'll, I'll use a detail brush just for now, just to show you what I mean. So I've got a bit of white by there. I'm just going to bring a bit of white. 
just very lightly go through that color we actually did the branches with I just want to darken that white off there you go just want to make it like a like a blue gray and then starting uh, we'll start on this one so just in the center of the tree there like that and then pull out towards you and twist the brush twist the brush like that let's make that a little bit darker maybe you'll see it a bit better so starting there and but twist the brush to get that very thin line like that okay and then we can go from there up to a very very thin just pull your brush off the canvas like that so it's, uh, the less pressure you put the thinner that line is going to, going to just going to be playing with the tip of that brush and then another little one coming out like that you could do it that way like that and then this is going to come like that and let's put a little bit of a fork going away from us that time there you go now this time we're going to go from there up and out and always got a little bit of try not to do too much it doesn't matter if you're going overboard a bit it doesn't matter and then blend that in there's a little bit of a kink there you can put a kink on you like that so that is definitely coming from the front of the tree that's coming from the back of the tree and um, if we do that again let's get a bit more paint together for you and let's go this way straight up and then away from you like that and that looks as if that's going up that way but it's coming from the front so that's coming towards us now that's going to the side that's going behind we can put a one coming off there like that put one coming in there Go behind that tree you don't need to put a lot of detail in these branches <coughs> We can bring another one in up and out like that. There's not going to be any leaves on these things, so that's coming off that one. And you can put in as many or as few as you want with these. But if you've got a strip line the brush which is one of these you need to make your paint reasonably thin and um, and then you can put some you can put some um, lighter very thinner thin type of branches in if you wanted to then like that there you go and maybe you could put a the lines here and there like that so let's look at these trees here and just develop a few more trunks Wash our brush out. Let that dry now. Let that dry. And if you can find a brush like that, this is this is an old um, scraggly old brush. I've got a better one somewhere. It's an old scraggly old brush. This one, see? Okay. And just 
tap that into a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, it doesn't even matter, a little bit of white, a bit of blue, and then very, very lightly, let's make sure my head's on a shot, very, very lightly, just touch those first trees with a little bit of white uh, to make it look as if you put a little bit more white on one side than the other it just gives it that little bit more of a, a, a depth look about it there you go that looks a little bit better you can put a little bit of sparkly sparkly here and there like that just touch in here and there just make it look as if there's a little bit of something going on there like that. get a bit of blue now and let's put a bit of blue in in that ground again I just want to give it that blueness yeah. I'm putting some more white over that in a second but let's go back to these trees let's get our detail brush again this is the one we did to, to do actually do the trees and we got all these different types of greys there where we mix a bit of white with them and, and things and this is a color we just mixed up from blue uh, yellow red a little bit of black so it's all those lovely colors we got there and i'm picking up my 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 cork stick again now this is a mid-tone color so let's just put a little bit of marks here and there where you think it's going to be slightly darker there we are and then mix in a bit of white to that so let's get a little bit of moisture into it so we're just taking it down a little bit brighter making a change changing its value this is what they say changing its value so again, just put a little bit of lightness into this tree. Don't kill all those dark bits. That's not what you want to do. And you just put a little tiny blocks of colour on top of the darker colours. Because it's going to give you that little essence of depth and tones. And with it and that. You're using different values of paint. So you're going to you're going to develop shadows and and that by just putting like the bits of paint in. So again, let's take that one stage further. Let's mix a lot more white to that now. Let's clean in my brush. And now let's brighten up just the one edge a little bit. The light is going to come this way so the, the the front or the back i should say the tree depending on which way you want to look at it the back of this tree is going to be slightly lighter because this is going to be catching the light more there and just develop these little bits of white onto those trees keep building up these colors so you're going from a dark color to a a mid-tone color to another brighter color which is nearly white and this is what we're looking for to, to do we just develop in our brightness on that one side of the tree so all we're trying to do and it's giving it form it's making them look rounded put a little bit on the front of that if you wanted to there you go And try this you've got you've got loads of, of ways to actually if you just follow along and, and just keep practicing I know you that you can do this this is this is not that hard and I know that's easy for me to say because <laughs> I've had that comment so many times that Clive you make it look so easy it's not as easy as you say it is it's because you've got to practice and all the students I've had over the years in my art groups and things like that um, I take them through similar stages to this and let's put a little bit of light now onto these branches there we go and um, 
Yeah, I get. I, I used to have it all the time, and and until I actually sit and do, and work along. And work through the pain barrier, which it is with acrylics. You do get a bit of a pain barrier um, because things don't always work out like you think. And as artists and teachers and video creators, we all try to to create lessons for you to make things look easy. And we say that you know this is easy lesson and all this. And I understand that it's not always easy, especially as a, as a beginner. And um, but you've got to persevere with the painting. That's that's important. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. If you you may have never, you, you, I I always say I never fail. I just haven't succeeded yet. That's one of my mottos. And and that's a good thing to actually have in your mind. Okay, so it's not exactly what we want it doesn't matter it's it, this is about painting process is is about enjoyment and learning your skills now a, a, a lot thicker picking up a lot more paint now on my brush again starting there and I'm pulling down with the flow I'm pulling down trying to develop a little bit of texture if you've gone over that tree, it doesn't matter, we can alter that in a minute. And just just pull in a couple of lines here and there like that. You can put a little bit of snow just on the trunks of those trees. Blending this snow in. There we are. Make it look as if it's been drifting there and there's pockets of colour showing through. There you go. Make it look as if there's pockets of colour showing through. And just lay this on nice and thick. We've got a bit of light. It's going to be a bit lighter there. Make it look as if it's been drifting up these trees. Dry brush again, dry brush up these trees. Make it look as if that snow has been just blowing around underneath the foots of these trees. There you are. And over there, that's where those stags are. Yes, remember the the paintings I did, the other winter scenes that I've done with the little stags. So that's where they are. They're hiding over there today. I can bring a bit of blue in there, like a bit of a shadow, just being cast by these trees. Dry brush. Just try a dry brush in there. There we are. Just make it look powdery. That's what we're trying to do. Just make it look powdery. There we are. And I really put this on nice and thick here now. Look as if there's a big thick snow bank there. Yeah, a big clump of snow over there. A big clump of snow. Going up the tree like that. There you go. And that's one simple little painting that, that anybody can attempt. And I'm sure that given the time that you can do that. Um, that's quite a nice, nice wintry scene. Um, what do you think? I think it looks quite nice. Yes, for a beginner painting, that is actually pretty good. What we can do is we can just get that paint off the brush again, and very, very lightly. If you wanted to, you could just. Drag a little bit of paint just across those green trees at the back there because I think they're just a little bit bright. So we just knock them back a touch like that. There you go. That's better. And if we can get a little bit of snow. Drifting up against those trees there. And you could put something else in there if you wanted to. But I thought 
well it's a little wintry birchy tree type thing <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm just gonna very quickly sign my name in the bottom right down corner today please like comment subscribe share my videos um, I don't know exactly when you're going to be watching this. As you know, time is relative on YouTube. So yes, this is another Christmassy one. So winter scene. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please um, leave comments in the comment box. I welcome that. And um, well, I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Nice. Hello. Yes, I just want to quickly talk about my fine mist atomizer bottle. Now, this is a very fine mist bottle that you can actually dampen down your canvas when or painting surface when you're working with acrylics to allow the paints to stay open that little bit longer because acrylics dry by forming the skin. So if you've got a very fine mist and that is sprayed onto the onto the painting, it's not going to dry out so quick. And um, these are available on my website, www.cly5art.co.uk. Please pop along there. There is videos there showing you all different other products. And there's some uh, videos in the iCards. If you want to press the iCard there, that's going to take you into a series of playlists where you can actually see me using all my products in all the paintings. Yes, so. Hey, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time, and don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk